Hello, everybody. This is Paul Neeson with Torah Life Ministries. Thank you for joining me this morning. We are reading the scriptures live as we do every day. We're up to Isaiah chapter 25, and uh, we're going to get started with prayer here this morning. We're going to read the Shema in Deuteronomy 6, 4 to 9. Shema Israel, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Echad, Baruch Shem Kivu, Mahutov Leolam Faiz. Hear, O Israel, Yahweh is our Elohim. Yahweh is one. Blessed is the name of his glorious kingdom for all eternity. And you shall love Yahweh Elohim with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And have these words, which I command you this day, be upon your heart. And you shall teach them diligently to your children. And speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you retire, and when you rise. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and let them be frontless between your eyes. And you shall write them on the doorposts of your house, and upon your gates. Amen. Amen. So uh, we are you're going to use several different translations. But one of the translations that I don't necessarily read but I, I, I like to look at often is the James Moffat scriptures. And these scriptures put the original and the renewed covenant in chronological order, or at least the best that, to the translator's ability here. And in, that's not every chapter, but some chapters we see this. And verse 25 or chapter 25 of Isaiah is one of those. So it starts off, I'm just going to read the numbers and, and we're not going to read it in this one, but you could do it another time. Uh, so chapter 25 would say 25, verse 6, 7, 8, and then 26, 20, 21, and then 27, 1, 12, 13, and then 25, verses 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 9, 10, and 11. So that's more of the... Uh, uh, chronological uh, order uh, of the Isaiah, and Isaiah, just so you have an idea of what it's saying and what it is. But we're going to read here our New Living Testament scriptures in, in 25 of Isaiah now. And basically it's praise for judgment and salvation. So now we're getting into Isaiah and he's going to be singing and he's going to be uh, giving us a song. So uh, it says, O oh, Yahweh, I will honor and praise your name, for you are my Elohim. You do such wonderful things. You planned them long ago, and now you have accomplished them. Hallelujah. What a great scripture here. It says here in the note, Isaiah honored and praised Yahweh because he realized that Yahweh completes his plans as promised. Yahweh also fulfills his promise to you. Think of the prayers that he has answered. And praise him for his goodness and faithfulness. Hallelujah. And when I think of this, you know, it says in Jeremiah, know the plans I have for you there for good and not disaster. To give you a future and give you a hope. So the plans he has for us. You see, we have to come to this understanding. Yahweh is smarter than we are. That's the first one. It also says in the scriptures, there's a way before each person seems right but ends in death. His plans offer us a future and a hope. And as Isaiah said here, and I'm getting highlighted out, it says, I will honor and praise your name. Your name, Yahweh, or how Yehovah, however you want to say it. We know it's not a title. I will honor and praise your name. Remember, pray, praise, proclaim, read, and repent, submit. For you are my Elohim. You do wonderful things, wonderful things. You planned Planned them long ago. It says he knows us when we were in the womb, before, uh, before we even formed. He knows every single hair on our head. And then verse two says, uh, "You mighty, uh, you turn mighty cities into heaps and ruins. Cities with strong walls are turned into rubble. Beautiful places, and distant lands disappear, and will never be rebuilt." And why? Because of people going on their own plan. People choosing their own way over his way. Remember, this is Isaiah singing. And, and we talk about singing, praising. It says, therefore, strong nations will, uh, will uh, declare you a glory. Ruthless nations will, hear, will, will, will fear you. But you are a tower of refuge to the poor, O Yahweh. A tower of refuge 
to the needy in distress. You are a refuge from the storm, a shelter from the heat for the oppressive acts of ruthless people are like a storm heating against the wall. And uh, let me get into this uh, note here on this verse because it's beautiful. It says, the poor suffered because ruthless people oppressed them. But Yahweh concerned concern for the poor and the refuge for them. When we are disadvantaged or oppressed, we can turn to Yahweh for comfort and help. Yeshua, Yeshua's status, uh, that the kingdom of Yahweh belongs to the poor. Uh, or he stated that the kingdom of Yahweh belongs to the poor. Hallelujah. Verse 5, like the relentless heat of the desert, but your silence, the roar of foreign nations. As the shade of a cloud cools the relentless heat, the boastful songs of ruthless people are stilled. And then we get into verse 6 here, and it says, In Jerusalem, my Elohim of heaven's armies, Yahweh, will spread a wonderful feast for all the people of the world. Hallelujah. Uh, it will be a delicious banquet with clear, well-aged wine and choice meat. Now, before you all get into a frenzy here and you hear me talk about wine and meat, this is a metaphor he's using here about all he will give. Let's look at one of the notes here. It says, here is a marvelous prophecy of all the people of the world, uh, Jewish people and non-Jewish people, at Yahweh's messianic feast, celebration, the overthrown of evil, and the joy of eternity with Yahweh. It shows that Yahweh intended his saving message to go out to the whole world and not just the Jewish people. During the feast, Yahweh, Yahweh will end death forever. The people who participate in this great feast will be those who have been living by faith. That is why they say, this is our Elohim. We trust him and he saved us. Hallelujah. So when Isaiah is filled with prophecies like that, verse seven, there he will remove the cloud of gloom, the shadow of death that hangs over the earth. Verse 8, he will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Elohim will wipe away all tears. He will remove forever all the insults and mockery against his land and people. Yahweh has spoken. And uh, the note here goes on to say, when Yahweh speaks, he does what he says. It is comforting to know that Yahweh plans and act, uh, plans and activities are closely tied to his word. When we pray according to Yahweh's will and exclaim his promise, he hears us and answers our prayers. And I will go to say, it says clearly in scriptures, he does not hear the prayers of the wicked. He's only hearing the prayers of people that are following his word. And I will submit to you that 90, if not even more percent of the so-called world's religions out there, including Christianity, are not following the word of our creator in the Bible. They're following a man-made system and their prayers aren't even being heard. Matter of fact, the scriptures say, don't even pray for those people. And that's his word. But this is what people get from these things. So it says in verse uh, eight, another note, it says, part of this verse is quoted in 1 Corinthians 15, 54 to describe Yeshua's victory over death. Yahweh's ultimate victory is seen when death uh, our, is our ultimate enemy, is defeated. Another part of this verse is quoted in Revelations 21.4, which describes the glorious scene of Yahweh's presence with his people. Amen. Amen. So that was verse 25.8. And uh, it's just something uh, wonderful to look forward to. Verse 9. In that day, people will proclaim, this is our Elohim. We trusted in him and he saved us. This is our Elohim who we trusted. Let us rejoice in the salvation he brings. And this is what we need to think because we all go through hard times and hardships. And we need to remember that uh, he wants good for us. Remember, he offers us a future and a hope. No matter what's going on in this world today, there is an answer. And it's only one way, and it's through Yeshua. So it says in verse 10, For Yahweh's hand is a blessing will rest on Jerusalem. But Moab will be crushed. 
It will be like a straw trampled down and left to rot. Moab was the enemy of Yahweh's people. And it's a great example of uh, you, you choose him either for him or against him. There's no middle ground. Either for our creator or against him. There's no neutrality with our creator. That's what we need to understand. Verse 11 says, Yahweh will push down Moab's people as a swimmer pushes down water with his hands. He will end their pride and their evil works. And we already saw about pride and humility. We've been reading in this book of Isaiah, uh, the pride and humility of the people and, and, and the difference in Yahweh's sight between those two. Verse 12 says, the high walls of Moab will be uh, demolished. They will be brought down to the ground, down to the dust. And in the next chapter, we read 26, we're going to see the praise to Yahweh. Uh, we're going to see this wonderful song of Isaiah, and we'll get to that tomorrow. Uh, but, but never doubt and don't underestimate that no matter what you're going through, Yahweh will pull us through. It says here, in the, the, the tenth, it says, Moab was a symbol of all who oppressed Yahweh and are rebellious to the end. Moab was Israel's enemy for years. And if, if you come against Yah's people, you're coming against Yah. So that's what we need to remember. And whoever's watching, whatever you think out there about the Bible, the word of our creator, whatever you think about our creator, you might say, why do we suffer? And we covered that yesterday. You know, we, we suffer for the, for the, for the, Earth suffers for the sins of its people. They have forgotten Yah's instructions and got away from his guidelines. I am 100% sure, 1,000% sure, if we stick or stuck to the guidelines as found in Scripture, the will of our Creator, not the law that people say was nailed to the cross, but the will of our Creator as found in his instructions, his Torah, the first five books of the Bible, and applied it, we would not have the problems in this world today that we have. We would not have the personal discomforts that we have today. We would have a peace upon us. And, and, and us believers that are following this have that peace. Where stuff is going on in the world that people say, well, how in the world can you not just shudder at, at, the, at knowing what's going on? Because I know that eternity awaits me and I'm only here for a short time. Because I know my creator protects me and he's my refuge when it's too hot outside, when it's too cold outside. He's my refuge. And it's the greatest feeling in the world because people could take away from you many things, but they can't take that away from you. Hallelujah. So we need to read the word every single day and, and be into the word. So uh, it's, it's so important. It's so important. And for those of you that are seeking him, I pray for blessings all upon you. And uh, I want to close this morning with a, a prayer of peace uh, found in Numbers 6, 24 to 26. And it's the ironic benediction. And some people say, well, do you ever read the Renewed Covenant, the New Testament? I'm reading the whole Bible, folks, every single day. And I've read many books from the New Testament, and I will read many more. We just happen to be going in order right now, and we're up to the book of Isaiah. You can see all of Proverbs and, and all of Psalms, and you can see many of the books of the New Covenant uh, right there on this website, Torah Life Ministries. If you're not already subscribed, go to the top of the page, Torah Life Ministries, and subscribe. Uh, and, and you can get our daily videos. We have thousands of videos on the website. So number 624 to 26. ka Yahweh, Vivishmarikaka, Yo Er Yahweh, Panana, Alaka, Vikunika, Yosi Yahweh, Panana, Alaka, Yasem Akashalom. Yahweh bless you and keep you. Yahweh make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Yahweh lift up his contents upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. And I want to remind everyone out there that's watching, as believers, there's six things we need to be doing on a regular basis. Pray, praise, proclaim, read and repent and submit. Those are the six things you need to make sure you're doing on every, a regular basis. You want his glory. You want his wonderful, uh, his wonderful solution or his plan for your life, his future and his hope. Pray every day. Be speaking to him. And remember, he's only going to hear your prayers if you're right with his word. So get right with his word. Uh, proclaim him every day. How many people did you tell today that Yeshua is Messiah and died for us? How many did you tell yesterday? Whether it's standing on a corner, whether it's at a bus stop, or whether it's through the internet. Let people know. You have no problem posting to your phone, you know, uh, crazy pictures of crazy things in this world. Well, why don't you post something saying Yeshua died for us as a reminder for people? I could drive down the block and see people holding up signs for a free car wash, but people are embarrassed to hold up a sign that says Yeshua died for them. 
Uh, pray, pray, proclaim, read it, reading his word. That's the only way we're going to know his word. Forget about what man is saying, his word. And repent. Repent means to change our minds. Change our minds from the thinkings of this fake media and everything else that, that we've been polluted with, of the man-made uh, systems out there, and, and get right with his word. And, and, and then submit, submit into his word, his will for our life. It's not about being under a curse or under a law or anything like that. It's about submitting to the one who created us, the, the, the Father in heaven, who sold us his plan for us as a future and a hope. Hallelujah. So, folks, thank you very much for watching today. I pray you have a blessed day. Please don't stop reading your scriptures now. The more you read, the better. It's not a race, but read it. Uh, soak it in. Go out there. Live the word. All right. Until then, everybody, have a blessed day. Please share this with others. And shalom, shalom.